Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to see how you can use Langchain and OpenAI to extract more information from your query. We're going to take a look at two examples. The first one is going to be a classification example where we pass the model a query and tell it to extract information such as sentiment, aggression, and language. In the second example, we're going to ask the model to extract key information such as location, city, price information, as well as rewrite the query if there is any uh, spelling mistakes. So let me go over the two examples on my uh, terminal window here, and then we're going to dive into the code to see exactly how we're doing it. So the first example we're going to see is the classification. So let's say the input we pass to the model. Uh, we change it to I am feeling sad today. Give me a few ideas of what to do. Okay. If we pass it to the model, uh, it's going to take a couple of seconds. And then you see that it has tagged our query with the sentiment of sad, uh, aggression of one, and language English. And now if we quickly take a look at the other example, so we're just going to quickly uncomment this piece of code. So my base query in this example is going to be late night delivery pizza and wings in Boston with a couple of typos. So if we run this one, um, you're going to see we're getting a few warnings, but here is the result. You can see that the my one string has been broken down into location uh, of Boston the base query, which is the original query, the rewritten query, which uh, does not have the typo. I still see a little bit of typo here, but uh, it's not always going to be perfect, but it gets pretty close to it. Uh, it also extracted the city being Boston, um, and then whether the user is looking for a reservation, takeout, or delivery, it has figured out that it is delivery. For price information, it could not figure out anything from the, from the query. So it, leave, uh, it left it empty. Okay, so let's take a look at both the examples, the code in the examples, and show you how you can do the same. So in the first one, we're going to uncomment the classification one. So it's pretty simple. The way you do it is uh, at first, of course, you define your OpenAI key, and then you have your prompt. This is your uh, initial prompt, which you're going to fill in later on. So all that the prompt does is it says the model to extract the desired information from the following passage. Only extract the properties mentioned in the classification or query tagging function. Now, uh, these are keys over here. So classification and query tagging are the names of the class that we're going to be passing to the model. So in this example, our class is called classification. So we're telling the model to use this class and extract the information from the query that, that we give it. Now, how do we give it the query? We give it the query in this, uh, in this placeholder called input. So before we call the model, we have to pre-fill this template with our query. So it can be a passage, it can be a single line like we have here but we essentially dynamically generate or dynamically populate the string with our query and then pass it to the model. And then when the model comes back, we're going to take a look at that. So when the model comes back with the response, if we uh, invoke the dot model dump method, we're going to get a, almost like a formatted version in a dictionary of uh, the, uh, the type that we're giving it. So to see this example, what we're doing here is when we're instantiating the LLM, the chat OpenAI LLM, we're passing in the model name and then we're giving it this uh, with structured output and the class name. What this line does is tells LLM that when you're giving me the output of my query, give it in this exact format. That's why when you do that dot model dump call, you're getting a dictionary with the same uh, with the same attributes or properties that you see over here. So for classification, you're saying sentiment, aggressiveness, and language. And if you remember, I'm gonna run it again. If we run the run the call again, you're gonna see that those are the exact uh, keys we're getting in our dictionary. 
Now, one key thing here is you're, when you're pa given you're passing this classification class to the model, you want to be as descriptive as de as descriptive as possible, so that the model gives you exactly what you want. So, one example would be for all the all the attributes, I'm passing it a enum, which almost tells the model for each one of these attributes only populate an answer from the enum that I'm providing you. So the model is not going to make up its own sentiment. It's only going to pick from happy, neutral, sad, nervous, and angry. Similarly for aggressiveness, we give it a scale of one through five. And then through the description property, we're explicitly telling the model what or how to use those numbers. Okay, so we're telling it that the higher the number, the more aggressive. Um, and similarly for language, we're enumerating the possible uh, the, the possible languages. Now, one key thing to note is this is not always going to be perfect. I have run into many cases where it makes up sentiment or uh, maybe I'm typing in a language that is not listed here and the model gets it correctly and provides that in the output. Let's say, I don't know, let's say it's going to it's going to come up with, uh, so I see French, German, English, Spanish, and Italian. Let's say I don't have Mandarin or Chinese, right? So uh, if that's the input, uh, if, if that is the input I pass to the model, it might just decide to infer the language correctly, even if uh, it is not in the enum. So be careful of that. Uh, you don't want to take it uh, as a 100% accuracy, but most of the time it will give you the right answer. Okay, so that's what we saw here. Uh, we define our class, which tells the model everything it needs to do to do the classification. We instantiate the LLM model and tell it to give structured output and pass in our class. After that, after that, it's just invoking the prompt. So at this stage, we're filling the prompt. Uh, so we're subbing out input for our query here. And finally, we're invoking the model and dumping the response. Okay, so this is one of the examples. Let's look at the other one, which is a lot more complicated. So I'm gonna comment this out and then we're gonna put this back in. The, so this is gonna use the exact same logic, but our, our class here, so our classification class will be different. So compared to the previous example where I was giving it the query and telling it to classify different language sentiment uh, from the query. In this example, we're gonna tell the model to extract key information because when, when the user types in the query, they can literally type in whatever they want to. But for our backend to understand the key information, it needs to be able to extract it, such as the query might have um, in, in this example, a location, price info, city, and you want the model to properly parse it and then give you those information in a dictionary. So uh, we're gonna we still have the same original prompt, which is gonna be telling the model to use uh, to use uh, information from either classification or query tagging. Query tagging is gonna be the class we're writing here. And then we're gonna sub out this input placeholder with our query, okay? So before we come to this, let's just look at the code below. So this is exactly what we saw before. We're instantiating the model. We're telling it to give a structured output and passing it our class where we dictate what exactly is the model supposed to do. And finally, we, uh, we uh, dynamically populate our initial prompt with the input, uh, call the model, dump the response, which is gonna be a dictionary. So now let's take a look at this class over here. So we're naming it query rewriting. And uh, the first thing we wanted to do is extract location information. You're gonna see that I'm, um, it's a string and in description, I'm almost telling the model exactly what to do. In this case, I'm telling it if there is location information, add that here. For the base query, it's again a string, and I'm telling the model that the base query that the user is asking about before any changes is made. This way, when uh, when the message comes back to my backend, I know exactly what the user inputted without any manipulation. The rewritten query is where I'm telling the model that if there is any wrong spelling, 
it should rewrite it and put it into this uh, into this key. City, very similar. We're just telling it to extract city information. But one key thing here is I'm telling it that if no city is provided, just leave it empty. The reason I'm saying this is many times in the user's query, they might not have a city name. In that case, I don't want the model to force itself to put something there. Instead, I'm explicitly telling it, unless you're confident, just leave it empty because we already have this location field where a lot of the information should already be there. Uh, and then we have price information, very similar. I'm telling it if you, if you can infer the price, do it. Otherwise, just leave it empty. And I'm also giving it some possibilities like cheap, moderate, or expensive. And lastly, we have reservation, takeout, or delivery. So trying to understand the intent of the user um, from the query. Uh, and I think over here, I am enumerating it. So I'm telling it that the intention can only be one of these three. Um, okay, so with that, uh, all these we already went through. So let's look at a couple of examples. So the first one we already saw, but let's take a look at it again. And then we're going to add another. So our original input is late night delivery pizza, wings in Boston. Um, if you take a look here, we would expect uh, Boston to be in location, base query should be the same, rewritten query should be the query without the typo like, uh, like pizza and wings. Price, I don't really see any price info here, so most likely it's gonna be empty. And it does call for delivery, so you'd expect this to be delivery. So let's see how good of a job the model does. Uh, so it got location Boston, base query is the same, re rewritten query, it fixed a pizza typo, but instead of like getting wings correctly, it got it got wigs. City, it got Boston, price, no information, so it's empty. And for the user intention, it did get that it was a delivery query. Let's try a different example. Let's say we want to try uh, cheap pizza near Atlanta. Uh, let's say cheap pizza places near Atlanta for Valentine's Day reservation. I haven't tried this before, so let's see what we get. Uh, okay, so we got location Atlanta, which is good. The base query is the same. Rewritten query, there wasn't any typo, so it did not rewrite anything. City Atlanta, price cheap, that's because I actually said cheap pizza places and then for intention it did get reservation so let's say i say instead of like explicit explicitly saying cheap let's say like a low price pizza places near atlanta for for late night delivery so if we do this now let it run so it got Atlanta, it got the base query, no typo, so nothing rewritten. Price is low. So this is a good example where, if you remember, I did tell it to pick from the enum of cheap, moderate, expensive, but yet it, uh, it uh, filled this dictionary or this key with low. This is an example of how it won't always keep itself res restricted to the enum. Uh, describe if you're gonna... Draw. Yeah, I also didn't like, I wasn't very strong in my wording here to tell the model that definitely pick uh, from the enum. You can try doing that, but again, this is not gonna be perfect all the time. Uh, okay, and then for intention, it did get delivery. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you folks in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.